Credit debit card spending year over year actually reversing the slowing growth that the data had showed going from 2.2 percent in December to all the way back up to 5.1 percent in January. Joining us right now to talk about it is Liz Everett Chrisberg, who is the head of the Bank of America Institute. And Liz, thanks for coming in. We, we've been watching the data that you all compile pretty closely because we're all trying to get a figure, an idea of what the consumer's feeling right now, how strong the jobs market is. The numbers that you're seeing really back up the strong jobs numbers that we got from the government last Friday that really set the market on edge because they're worried about what this means for the Fed. Walk us through what you're seeing just in terms of consumer spending, consumer saving, and what their income levels are. Absolutely. First of all, thanks for having me. It's great to be here. But yeah, we did see acceleration of consumer spending in January. Uh, debit and credit card increased by 5.1%, which you said. But that really represented a turnaround. So what does that mean? Well, every month at the Bank of America Institute, what we do is we look at the data, and that includes all the proprietary data from Bank of America from our 67 million customer accounts. And saw a couple of things that I think are interesting. First, income growth, not only from the jobs report, but across a, a number of, of groups. And then the second thing which we looked at is, is the growth being funded by the income gains or is inflation you know, really having an impact? Yeah. And to figure out and look at that, we looked at deposit balances, right? Are people eating up their deposit balances? And again, across all income levels, we see it's coming down, but at a slowing pace. So the consumer is still in a better position than they were before the pandemic. We have heard some officials, some bank officials, who have predicted that the excess savings that the consumer has and that they've had through the pandemic would run out maybe by June or July of this year. Does, does your data show that, or what, what's your expectation? I don't, we, haven't, we haven't done that exact analysis, but if we look at it on an inflation-adjusted basis, again, especially the low-income consumer, they have 52% more on median deposits than they did before the pandemic. It would take a while for that to, um, to really run out. So the summer seems a little bit soon. The other thing I think is notable is that rate of decline of balances is really flattening out. So yes, it's off the peak from last April, but it's only declined by about 1% this year. Income, higher, higher income levels, what, what do you attribute that to? Higher income levels. Well, we saw, you know, we talked about the Friday, last Friday's jobs report. Um, employment is strong, but I also see income gains from minimum wage increases. So in January, almost half of the states in the United States increased their minimum wages. And that's keeping up with inflation for the good part. The other thing we saw, and you guys have talked about this, Social Security. You know, in January, you saw an 8.7 increase in Social Security payments. That's a four decade high. Now, all of that didn't necessarily hit recipients' accounts in the beginning of the month, but they knew it was coming, and I think it's, they're adjusting their spending for it. Not everything is fantastic. Inflation is still a pretty big headwind for consumers, too. How does that match up? Inflation is definitely a headwind, and I think particularly for the lower-income consumer, right? Um, if you think about how they allocate their dollars, a lot of, more of it is disproportionately in food and in shelter. And while we are seeing inflation come down in areas like energy, Food and shelter, utilities, it's still there. So there are certainly still headwinds.